I wouldn't say that I grew up in the Adelaide Hills because growing up implies a certain amount of maturity. For now, I'll just say that I was raised there. And that's why I was so excited to meet John from Benbrook Wines because he's been able to get so much of the beauty of the Adelaide Hills and squeeze it into his fantastic wines. And this cigar? Well, I'll leave that as a little mystery for you now. Before we start our little journey through the Adelaide Hills, John let me in on a little secret. He wasn't the first in his family in the beverage business. Uh, my late father uh, used to always uh, make the comment that, son, there's no such thing as bad booze. Just some are better than others. Uh, this was a man that flew P-51s during the war and used to bleed the alcohol out of his uh, instrument panel and put a drop of iodine in there and a teaspoon of coke and call it scotch. So, you know. <laughs> And with a pedigree like that, let's start our journey through the Adelaide Hills. Our first stop is Piccadilly in the Eastern Hills. This place is so amazing that they even named a London suburb after it. And it's also where John gets his grapes for his Chardonnay. Chardonnay is from a little patch up at Piccadilly. It sat on uh, some used oak for uh, 10 months. Okay. Um, I think it's uh, it's remarkably good wine. So what kind of flavours would um, people be uh, looking for in this one? When well, I think the, the oak has to be somewhat subtle in there. Not too overpowered, but there's a little bit of funkiness at the end of it though, that I, I quite like in it. Um, I think it's got a, a wonderful um, uh, palate length on it and it just lingers on your mouth. Nothing better to have this with a nice bit of griddle barramundi or something like that. Very simple, not, yes. nothing that you want to go and um, kill flavours with, you know. But, uh, that is a, a lovely shardy. It is, it, it, it's a great shardy. I wish I still smoked because this is a really good cigar. I know that's a bit of a contradiction. You should be drinking a big uh, jammy red. But uh, I think that there's some uh, good, nicely wooded Chardonnay is something that, you know, wraps itself around a bit of tobacco. Okay. <laughs> he, he's right, you know. But now, let's have a look at his delicious peony Riesling, which comes from the gorgeous town of Macclesfield. I think they also named an English town after this place. We don't do it every year. It's uh, it's hard to uh, get the quality in the fruit there. This has got some nice citrus uh, flavours about it. Um, it's quite flinty in some respects. There's a depth of flavour in there. And I look forward to trying this in 10 years time. God damn it. Anyway. Anyway. Our next stop is one of the most famous towns in the Adelaide Hills, Harndorf, where Benbrook have their cellar door. While they haven't got around to naming any place in England after it yet, I do believe the name has since become very popular in Germany. What's great about the cellar door is that from Thursdays to Sundays, it also doubles up in an Italian restaurant, La Passeggiata, which serves an amazing antipasto and tapas style meals. After all this running around the Adelaide Hills, the delicious food, his fantastic whites, I need a red like England needs a suntan and dental work. So now it's time to check out one of his most famous reds, his Goat Track Shiraz, also crafted from grapes from Macclesfield. It's bountiful in fruit and its middle palate is very strong um, and it's a very drinkable Shiraz. What I like about this is also the uh, complexity of the flavour. Has a lot uh, of complexity. Very subtle um, tannins that give it some structure. Yes. And stone fruits you'd expect in, in, in a, a lovely Shiraz. One of the things that's quite interesting about the Reds of Benbrook, and it took me some while to appreciate this, because there were some vintages there that uh, 
I almost cast aside because I didn't think they were up to scratch in the in the very early days. But the unique thing was about four or five years later they became brilliant. So it's a very long process. The, the fruit is complex. It takes um, it needs its 12 to 18 months in a barrel, and it certainly needs two or three years in a bottle. After that amazing 2013 goat track, John had a surprise for me. Brought along. Um, a bit of a classic goat track as well, which is our 2008, uh, which I very, very rarely open, but you've got me in a weak moment. Okay, excellent. Uh, 2008, been in a lot of blind tastings mm -hmm. with the great reds of Australia. Nine times out of ten, um, it's a preferred wine. Unfortunately, we've got very little left. Uh, <laughs> It shows amazing fruit still up on its nose. Oh, absolutely. Well, this is this is the epitome of uh, of a warm Christmas cake. Mm. I think there's a spice, well-made Christmas cake. I might add, a yeah. gooey, well-made grandma's fruit mm -hmm. cake that was stitched with a fair bit of brandy and yep. threepenny pieces. This would be <laughs> what it is. It's not a lot of the eye it left, but that's not just due to it being a rare wine. It's also because of John's commitment to producing superb wines. And so uh, it's small production and we really try very hard to make sure uh, that we produce the best that we possibly can. And if, we, we, if it doesn't meet, meet the criteria, mm. um, it just gets sold out as bulk. Yeah. Uh, we're too small to take chances. Sure. So drop by Benbrook Cellar Door, maybe book a fantastic Italian meal and try John's yummy wines. He also has a yummy rosé, a Sauvignon Blanc, Cab Sav and a Cab Sav Shiraz. You won't be disappointed.